Ladies and gentlemen, it's my uh, pleasure to be back in your state uh, again. Um, we had the, the privilege to uh, be in your state uh, during the federal shutdown. Uh, and uh, when I um, had some remarks um, at uh, the program that you had uh, during that time, I expressed to you that I was not working. I was not representing the National Science Foundation in any uh, capacity and I'm just delighted to um, have been invited back a second time. Uh, now I can tell you that uh, I am representing uh, the National <laughs> Science Foundation and this is, this, is, this is work for me but frankly it is really not work, this is fun. And uh, I've said um, a number of times to students across the nation that um, as we approach um, decisions about career paths and your one's interest uh, and, and trying to find your passion. You want to find an area uh, that um, you feel guilty about picking up your paycheck. And uh, there are times when I, I really do feel guilty about uh, the fact that they're paying me to do something that I thoroughly enjoy. There are times um, when I, uh, I'm, I'm working, uh, I forget that it's time uh, for lunch. And well beyond lunch, I'm still working. Uh, there are times when the bell rings to go home in the evening uh, at uh, five-ish, and I'm still working at seven. Uh, and there are times when I find myself back in the office on the weekend and on the holidays. Um, I'm, still, I'm still working. It just doesn't matter. I'm doing something that I enjoy to do. Uh, and uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing with me now, and that is my thing. So uh, I'm delighted um, to uh, be in your state and to have an opportunity to have a few words with you about a program that uh, I feel very strongly about and that we've had some good successes uh, since its inception back in 1991. But now first off, let me acknowledge first of all that uh, uh, to uh, the, um, uh, the government and, and, and state officials that, uh, that, that are in the room, uh, uh, the president of this great institution. We are happy um, to um, have been invited back and certainly to Provost uh, uh, John White. I thank you very much for um, your, um, your vision uh, and, and your efforts uh, to make sure that students um, have an opportunity to excel. To all the uh, university officials uh, at UNLV, uh, at every rank, at every level, the faculty, the staff, and students. Uh, I, indeed, I bring you greetings from the National Science Foundation and its leadership. Um, our, uh, act, the uh, acting director of the foundation, Dr. Cora Merritt, and uh, my, uh, uh, my immediate boss, um, Dr. Um, Sylvia James, and uh, the, uh, the, the assistant director, um, Joan Farini Mundy. We all bring you greetings um, from, from Washington, and we are um, back in, in, in business. And let me be uh, sure to have you know that as we consider what we do uh, in the LSAM program, our lines are surely not blurred. We don't have any blurred lines in our program. So I want, I want you to know that uh, we, we, we know clearly what we need to do and uh, I'm delighted again to be in your state to help you to know that there is an effort at the federal government level your, this, um, this second annual STEM Summit is right on target. Uh, you, uh, you obviously are visionary. Uh, the, uh, the summit itself, uh, the theme, um, uh, shaping uh, Nevada's future is timely and it's uh, uh, something that um, uh, is right in line with the, the work that your governor has set forth uh, in the strategic plan uh, for the state. And uh, your efforts uh, in the, the STEM Summit is in line also nationally with national needs. Uh, the governor um, um, has been uh, very clear in, um, in outlining his plans uh, for uh, excellence uh, in economic uh, growth and development for the state. Now the vision in this plan um, is for a vibrant, innovative, and sustainable economy and with a mission for high quality uh, jobs for the people of Nevada. Now the governor's plan uh, outlines five fundamental, uh, fundamental and necessary uh, objectives. 
I'm going to just uh, call attention, however, to just one, one objective, and that's objective number five. It is to increase um, opportunity through education and workforce development. And, and therefore, and therein, this second annual uh, STEM summit uh, is an example of the necessary uh, discussions and the strategic planning and partnering uh, with stakeholders um, in, uh, nationwide and beyond. The National Science Foundation, in particular, uh, with um, an assortment of federal programs, um, uh, is set to prepare to assist uh, the state of Nevada. And uh, by my presence here today, I want you to know that um, we are inv uh, inviting you to partner with us, uh, starting with uh, the, um, uh, the partnership known as the Lewis Stokes Alliances for Minority Participation Program. Now, your state's demographics, uh, the, the demographic shifts, uh, towards an infusion of underrepresented minorities uh, begs your attention. And STEM, um, STEM uh, the tide, uh, is something that we need to pay attention to. Now, I'm, 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 I'm going to just uh, make reference to a, uh, um, a new book, a relatively new book, uh, and I'm holding it right here in my hand, it, and the title is, is the same, STEM the Tide. And it's something that I, I invite uh, uh, the folk uh, sitting uh, in the audience to pay attention to. Uh, you must know that um, study after study um, has shown um, that America's students are, are rank far behind uh, their international uh, counterparts uh, in the STEM fields. Um, and that is just deplorable in, in, in the minds of many. I, I agree that uh, there's something that uh, we need to work on. And so there are many efforts um, through the federal government uh, and state governments that uh, uh, is attempting to turn that around. Uh, I won't uh, give any uh, particular quotes from this document, but it's one that I, I do um, recommend that uh, you pay attention to. And a second document that I, I want to bring to your attention is one um, by the National Academy of Sciences. And this uh, book is entitled, Expanding Underrepresented Minority Participation, America's Science and Technology Talent at the Crossroads. We are, um, we are at, at a crossroad. We have um, traditionally in this country, we have um, uh, not taken full advantage of the large uh, talent pool of um, an untapped talent pool of underrepresented minorities. But uh, given the fact of the, uh, of the, the facts of the day, wherein we're not getting uh, as many foreign students coming on uh, to America to be trained and staying in America, they are still coming um, and, and being trained, but uh, they're going home after being trained. And so we don't have access to as many uh, the, uh, those individuals as we have in the past. So the question is, uh, why can't we take advantage of the untapped um, and, uh, native uh, individuals in our country, i.e. Uh, U.S. citizens? Uh, and especially this fast, very, very fast um, growing uh, group known as the historically underrepresented minorities. Now, by definition, uh, the group that we're talking about are uh, African Americans, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Pacific Islanders, who have uh, historically not been uh, a major player uh, in science and engineering. However, that's changing fast. That's changing very, very fast. And I can share with you, uh, um, when I was here before, I did call attention uh, to the fact that uh, we, um, uh, I have a compilation of 5,547 individuals in here who have participated in the LSAM program. So if you don't believe um, uh, the, uh, uh, the fact that uh, when I throw out a number, a very large number to you, if you want to see some real faces, they are here. I've got them right here. And this is just a, a small sample of individuals who have graduated uh, from the LSAM program. As a matter of fact, you should know that um, the LSAM program from its inception in 1991, we have produced 
407,000 individuals at the baccalaureate level from the LSAM program alone. Just one program. And I've only got uh, just uh, enough strength to hold up just 5,000 right here. So if you want to see uh, some faces, uh, to see uh, real bodies, the real faces, uh, I've got them right here. Now, what I'd like to do at this particular point um, to um, be very, very specific about um, the, uh, the opportunities in the LSAM program, because I want everybody to know uh, what you are capable of getting into. And with the PowerPoint presentations, um, we are going to uh, show you a few uh, facts and figures <clears throat> to give you some good sense of what's going on in the LSAM program. And I'm going to be assisted by Nicole here that's going to give me the, this. And by the way, I, 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 just, I just must point out that uh, the, uh, you all have really rolled out the, the red carpet for me uh, uh, since I, I, I've been in, in your state twice. And Nicole and her compadre have been uh, uh, very, very helpful uh, uh, with me in, in making sure that everything that I need to, <clears throat> to give this, this presentation is at hand. And even down to the point of having um, two, two teachers from Clark County, uh, Brittany and Sharice, uh, to, uh, to assist me at the table um, uh, today at lunch. So I thank you very much uh, for all of the uh, Clark County folks uh, that, that are in the house, and especially those two outstanding teachers. So we thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm going to uh, move this clicker now and see can not we uh, get things going. Here we go. All right, we're known as LSAMP. <clears throat> Just so you know, this program was first known as the uh, Alliances for Minority Participation Program. And then in 1999, when Lewis Stokes, congressman from Cleveland, Ohio, um, retired, who was a champion of support for, of uh, educational programs for all people, um, and his name was added to the front of AMP. Therefore, we're known as the, uh, the Lewis Stokes AMP Program or LSAMP, as some people prefer to, uh, to uh, refer to us. Just so you know that we do have some other programs within the division that I represent, which is the uh, HRD, um, uh, Human Resource uh, Development Division, um, uh, that broadens participation. There's the AGEP program, CREST, the HBCU UP program, the TCUP program, and LSAMP. And I'm just going to refer um, to um, the LSAMP program uh, in, in this presentation, but we do have other programs in, in, in the division and certainly uh, in the portfolio throughout NSF, there are other programs that uh, the state of, uh, of Nevada uh, can uh, uh, participate in and not including the programs that we have uh, in the research directorates, which is also available uh, for, uh, for additional support. All right, uh, the LSENT model. Uh, some years ago, we uh, start when we started this uh, in uh, in '91. We followed um, a, uh, a the um, suggestions uh, that were made by uh, Vincent Tinto. Uh, we followed his model. He says that for any student who's going to have success, that student needs to be socially integrated, uh, academically integrated, uh, into the fabrics of the institution. Well, the LSAM program came along and said, well, there's one other piece, and you can see the bottom box here uh, that uh, speaks to professionalization uh, in, in our own terms. This is wherein uh, we uh, invite uh, our students to mimic uh, the, uh, the professional behaviors uh, of, their, uh, of their research directors, of their mentors. Uh, follow them around in the lab and uh, mimic what they do, do research, uh, report on, on the research of the, uh, their findings. Uh, at national meetings and the like. And that piece is called professionalization. So therefore, when we add professionalization to uh, the, uh, the Tento model, we've adopted that and we call that the LSAMP model. That is the LSAMP model. Here are some of the elements of the LSAMP model. <clears throat> Please note that um, the uh, long list of, uh, of um, elements, um, as, you, as you see there uh, under students, that's fundamentally what we do in the LSAM program. Those are the elements. And I'll just point out one in particular, and that is we put a lot of stock in undergraduate research. That's very important. As a matter of fact, if I had a magic wand, if I had the kind of resources um, that, um, uh, that uh, is totally needed 
to ensure that every student who is a STEM major at some point in the four-year program would have an opportunity to do a research project, I would command that. I would command it, I would just wave it just like that and be done with it. So every, every major, every major uh, of, of, of every kind in science, technology, and, and engineering. Now, uh, while uh, I recognize the advantages uh, that uh, faculty talk about uh, and through the lecturing um, uh, process, and I understand the value of that, uh, in delivering um, a lot of information in a relatively short time to a lot of people. Well, but the, uh, um, the particular element uh, that uh, is the glue that certainly allows for students to be really wedded uh, to a STEM field is to get their hands wrapped around a research project. And I would, I would, I would encourage every institution uh, and every, um, every major uh, in a STEM field to ensure that a particular, uh, that all students have at least one semester of undergraduate research. And if they can have more, well, that's fine. Uh, some institutions, we have one institution that's in our program, they guarantee that every STEM major will have at least one semester of research experience. That's, uh, the, uh, that's Miami of Ohio. Uh, and uh, they have lots of money to do that. And um, we, f from um, our portfolio at the National Science Foundation, to help uh, even small schools that don't have a lot of research acumen, they don't have a lot of research activities going on, but we can provide, and we are providing, at least $5,000 per student who gets accepted to the DOE, Department of Energy's uh, laboratories around the country. There are about a dozen such laboratories. And we will pay $5,000 to the student um, to go uh, to, the, uh, to the lab for the eight to 10 weeks uh, at a national laboratory. That's on top of the regular budget that the LSAM program provides uh, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the alliance. Now, <clears throat> another um, piece associated with that acti activity is that we will allow um, up to $12,000 for a faculty member who, ch who will select two to three students uh, and take them to uh, the DOE lab and they work as a team. And that, again, comes off the top of the budget in my office. So uh, that is a way that we want to push um, getting more, more individuals into the uh, research activities. Now, we don't do a whole lot, but you see it uh, near the bottom here, well, under faculty and institutional development. We don't do a whole lot in that area. That's not what the AMP program is about. We are student-focused in this program. Although, from time to time, there's a need to have some activities associated with ensuring that faculty are sufficiently trained uh, to be appropriately sensitive uh, to working with uh, uh, minority groups, and that's, and, and that's something that we uh, uh, will support. But for the main, in the main part, uh, the uh, activities should be those centered on the students. But please know that the LSAM program is not a financial aid program. This is not about scholarship for every student in the program. Some students do get a stipend, but the stipend is normally associated with some payback requirement. Let's say that, um, the, uh, that we have a student who is uh, very, very good in, in mathematics. So we will ask that student, uh, uh, the sites will ask that student to uh, serve as a tutor uh, and keep a, a, and, and hold tutorial sessions in mathematics to make sure that others who may be uh, struggling a little bit in math will be brought up to snuff uh, to, uh, uh, to work. So then that student then is given a stipend for her work uh, in the laboratory um, uh, or in the, in the classroom. So there's some payback requirement and we encourage that. All right, but at the same time, I want you to know, uh, we're not about giving scholarships to everybody uh, just to be in, in this program and, and there are no requirements. There are, there are, there are expectations and it's, it's something that is working and working well. Now, those students who are getting um, a stipend of some kind, those are known as level one students level one. And those students who are in the AMP program who have their support from some other source, let's say that, um, um, that um, the university itself um, has some scholarship and, and they award that to that student, um, but it doesn't come from the AMP program, we call those level two students. The student may therefore have their support from, from some other source, and we're not supporting double dipping um, for a student. 
So therefore, uh, you have your money already, you have your scholarships, you have what it needs, uh, your, your needs are financial and they met, and therefore, but what you want is the academic involvement through the elements uh, in the AMP program. You want to be at those seminars. You want to work with a professor in the laboratory. Uh, and uh, so therefore, we count you as well as a student in the LSAM program. Okay, let's do it. In uh, 2006, we surveyed all of our sites, all of our campuses, and we determined that 85% of our programs had some kind of a pre-college activity. So therefore, for all the pre-college uh, uh, individuals in the room, um, AMP um, encourages some leveraging of the federal funds to find private funds, to, find, to use state funds to fund those pre uh, uh, college activities. So we uh, value and we understand the importance of ensuring that elementary and middle school kids have an opportunity to wrap their hands around uh, uh, a project, uh, Lego projects uh, and uh, robotics projects in the end and the full nine yards in, in that regard. We do have a bridge program um, at, um, at, the, uh, at the transition point from going from the baccalaureate degree to graduate school, and uh, that is referred to um, as the bridge to the doctorate. The right-hand side of this list here speaks to um, of that particular activity. Just a word about that. The bridge to the doctorate, uh, only students who have graduated from the LSAM program are eligible to apply for the, for the BD, bridge to the doctorate. The bridge to the doctorate pays uh, $30,000 per year uh, for the first two years of graduate studies. It pays an additional $10,500 to the institution that we decide uh, is the BD site. And, that crit and there's a critical mass that is required. We won't send a single student. We will not send Brittany uh, uh, all by herself uh, to graduate school. Um, uh, uh, but uh, the preference is to send 12 Brittany's um, to, uh, to that graduate site. And we think that that's a, a better arrangement to have a, uh, um, a, uh, an instant community. Because you see, people have a way of having somebody to commiserate with, um, to, uh, to share uh, information with, uh, and to be encouraged by the group. So 12 students at each site that we identify as the graduate site is available. And so um, the rule is right now, however, for any newbies, any new, new LSAM sites coming online, you have to be um, a, uh, a senior AMP, a senior alliance before you're eligible. But the fact is, from the very beginning, your students will be eligible from day one to participate in uh, one of the BD sites someplace in the nation. We funded 14 sites this, fa this past round, 14 locations. So you could pick and choose any one of those and make your application. And uh, that total financial package is $81,000. That covers the first two years of graduate studies. Now the expectation is, just like it says by the title, bridge to the doctorate. So the expectation is that you will find support for years three and beyond. But if, you, if you're spending all of your time, that is your job is to do your work the first two years, no teaching, no, 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 no extra lab work, you get on with your academics. That's what you do. So you have a chance to be the very best that you can be. And we expect that. And then in that second year, uh, uh, you will be able to, we believe, find support. Now we give you some, um, uh, some advice about that. And the BD sites have a responsibility to lay a plan for you, to work with you in finding support from the Sloan Foundation, from the Ford Foundation, from NSF we have what's called the Graduate Research Fellowship. Graduate Research Fellowship. And that pays uh, $32,000 per year uh, plus uh, $12,000 uh, per year for the cost of education. But the student stipend is $32,000 a year and that's a three-year award if you get that. Graduate Research Fellowship. So there is money available. But what I need, I need, I need underrepresented minorities to get involved in this program, to get serious about uh, the academics and, and, and get on with it. There are opportunities. The light green shows uh, where we have um, uh, sites involved in the LSAM program. Um, and uh, the, um, the dark green there 
uh, we have no activities at all, except for the Nebraska that shows the two stars. Uh, and those, uh, the stars represent um, the tribal colleges. And uh, the small stars are, are associated with the big star up there in Montana. Uh, and they, um, uh, Montana, Salish Kootenai, a tribal college, is the lead campus uh, for uh, the, uh, the all nations LSAM. So uh, um, that's what the stars represent. But um, you can see the states where there are, there are activities going on. Um, and Nevada, uh, there is, uh, we have it uh, there because there are some, uh, there has been some association with um, the, um, the uh, site in, in Arizona and, and, and also New Mexico. But what we want to do, we want to have a, a white dot um, beside Nevada. Uh, the next time that we redo this map. Uh, and that would indicate that uh, we've got an alliance in that state, you see. You don't have a white dot right now, but uh, we'll, we'll need to fix that. And, uh, but that's, this is where you, you can see that we're spread across the country. Uh, uh, we have, we're as far uh, to the west, uh, to uh, the, uh, the Hawaiian Islands, America Samoa, um, the Marshall Islands, they're all a part of the LSAM program, the Islands of Opportunity. Uh, we're in Puerto Rico, uh, they're involved with it, we're in Alaska, uh, we're all across the country. There are, all, there are more than 600 campuses in the LSAM program, and uh, we're pretty well spread out. Uh, we just funded um, uh, uh, the new alliance in Ohio and Kansas. They are part of what we do now. So we're delighted about what's going on there. How about some numbers, how are we doing? You follow the star, you see that um, in, um, in, in 2011, and this is for one year. These are the numbers in one year. We produced 31,003 baccalaureates. 31,003 baccalaureates in underrepresented minorities in the LSAM program in the nation. In 2012, we, we topped 32,000. You can see the fields. Some fields we, we have more activity than in, uh, in, than in others. Some, some numbers are small. Geosciences is is historically small. Environmental sciences, relatively small. But you can see what, how the numbers break out. Okay, and you can see the ethnic groups as well, how they stack up. And the majority of our students, um, overwhelming, uh, overwhelmingly, and that's been changing greatly, uh, they are uh, Hispanics. That's our largest group, followed by African Americans. And uh, the, other two, the other two groups are very small. But we need to do better. Okay, by gender, for those interested in, in, and wanted to know how, how we break out gender-wise, you can see how the numbers stack up gender-wise. Uh, we have a few more males, but that number, but the number of females uh, uh, participating and graduating is, is, is outstripping males uh, overall uh, now with, with the new number. So when I redo this, we're gonna show, we'll see that, we'll show that the females uh, have, have caught up uh, in the AMP program. So you can see what the numbers are. All right, on the represent minority STEM enrollment, over time, this shows from the very beginning when uh, we started back in the, uh, uh, back in the 90s uh, to, to 2011, you can see that there's a, a, a steady increase. And, and I have to be frank with you and honest with you to know, have you know that some of this growth is related to the fact that uh, we've, we've added some new alliances. Okay, so it's not all just the same growth from the original sites. When we started, uh, there were six uh, alliances when we first started back in, uh, back, back in uh, 91. But now we have 42 alliances across America. All right, the numbers in terms of degrees, same thing. That 30, uh, 31,003, that's what the big bar in, 20, in 2011 shows you right there. I won't spend any time uh, here, but just to show you that um, some of the activity, you know, I mentioned uh, uh, a little while ago that 85% of our sites had some pre-college activities. You can see it up there, see? 85% summer programs, that's pre-college, yeah. All right, so we have a lot of activities in, uh, across the board. There's not a single amp that's identical to another. We're not prescriptive in the, in the sense that we don't have a cookie cutter and require that every amp is, is different. And, and, and we allow that. Uh, you see, for example, um, the, the sites decide um, 
the, uh, the strategies, the elements of the model may be a little different for native students uh, up, up there in Montana versus an urban campus uh, in, in New York City. So the strategies may be a little different and we, and we allow for that variation, all right? Mm -hmm. If you ask uh, what are the keys to success, well, the alliance structure, um, the, uh, the uh, campuses working together as an oil, as a well oil unit um, is very, very important and they meet regularly and have conversations about what works and what does not work. Then they'll tweak it and keep tweaking it until we um, have a product um, that uh, is working well. Summer Bridges um, program uh, of many, many types. Mentoring, mentoring is very, very important both faculty and student mentoring, the research experience for, undergr uh, for undergraduates, very important, drop-in centers. Every campus has a location that the students can identify with, and they, can go, they go there and they uh, drink coffee and, um, and, and uh, punch and they commiserate, uh, they talk about that some of them have computers and they do research uh, and, and they, can, they can have a, an academic exchange, they get, they get advice, uh, and all that goes on. But also we know that uh, they, uh, what really, really helps to make this effort work is a caring staff, people. We're talking about caring faculty, staffers at all levels working with the students. The students need encouragement. The students need to hear what they need to hear not just what, they, what you think they may want to hear, but we have people who will tell them point blank what they need to know. Sometimes that means they're giving them a kick in the pants. When, when they screw it up on an exam, when they didn't invest appropriately and do the homework. Sometimes they gotta be told. You know, for some of these students, this is the first time that they've been away from home um, when, they, when they go off to college. And so mom and dad is now looking over their shoulders and telling them to get the homework done. So they own their own and they have a time management problem. Sometimes these sites have, 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 a work, have workshops on time management. That's a good thing. Uh, and so this is the kind of thing that's going on in, in, in this program. Just a collage here of students um, at one of the, at the National Laboratory of Brookhaven. Um, and you can see uh, that um, they um, spend time um, doing undergraduate research, which is very important. Well, we had an evaluation of, of our program and that was published in 2006. Uh, and um, there's the, the executive summary, 25 pages worth. And I just want to take, uh, I'm gonna go back to this. Did I hit it too fast? Okay, let's try one more time now. Not so fast. All right. I want to call attention to uh, the fact that what you see, you see three blocks. Um, you see the LSAM students at the, at the very top, and in the middle four blocks, bars, you have um, a compilation of minority students who were not in the AMP program, and in the bottom four bars, you have uh, 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 whites and Asians who obviously were not in the program. Um, now let's just compare, just as, a, just as a comparison, let's compare bar number four in each of the three categories, in each of the three groups, and use that as an indication of, of success and a comparison of how AMP compares with the two comparison groups. 45% of the LSAM students went on to, grant, uh, to, to complete graduate degrees versus 20% of minorities who were not in the AMP program versus 18% of Asians and whites. That's what the data shows. They came out of the evaluation. As a matter of fact, when they first did the, did the report, um, they, were, they said, oh, this is not right. That's just not, that's not, can't be right. That's just not, that's not what we uh, expect. And so they had, uh, they hired on, the, the consulting group hired on an extra statistician and they went back and massaged the numbers, looked at them again and again. And they said, nope, you were right. That's what the numbers show. This is exactly what's going on. So the message here is that when underrepresented minority students are given an opportunity, put in a nurturing environment, given an opportunity, and this, the appropriate support that they need, 
they will succeed. Okay, well, just another way of looking at, at some of this as well. LSAMP graduates versus the two uh, comparison groups. 80% took further coursework after the bachelor's degrees versus 60%. 66, 65% uh, pursued graduate degrees versus 45% in the two comparison groups, et cetera. So you can see how the LSAMP students stack up. Well, I'm not going to uh, uh, talk about that. That's not what I want to do. All right. Well, I've already mentioned the bridge to the doctorate. Just a few, fa few faces, but I've already shown you a document that I've got that has 5,547. You know, it's, it's just a coincidence that uh, the numbers <clears throat> came out 547. But would you believe that the, the house that I grew up in, uh, a little kid in Mississippi, the street address, 547. <laughs> Just some more of the Bridge to the Doctor students. We've supported about 1,500 students with, with uh, the BD scholarship at this point. And, and that number's growing. This is some of the, well, the sites, the states where the BD has been supported. Now at this point I want to cut to the, uh, um, and I'm going to wind up this presentation and I need six minutes of your time, six more minutes, and then we're going to rest our case. Ready. If you're thinking about a career in science or engineering, the following program could be just for you. We're doing research in quantum mechanics, movement of particles. Well, I'm actually working on building an atom trap. My research is about using mathematical models to find the shapes of placentas. We're going to tell you about the Lewis Stokes Alliances for Minority Participation Program, LSM for short. The LSM program really opened the doors for me to, to a, a whole new world of possibilities. As a student taking part in the LSAMP program, you get lots of exciting opportunities and experiences to help you graduate and become one of our future scientists and engineers. Think of your circuits now no longer as, as a flat plane, but as this 3D cloud that just, they interact, they talk to each other, something you've never seen before. The LSAMP program was started in the early 90s by the National Science Foundation, and since then over 400,000 historically underrepresented students have taken part. After I graduate, uh, I would like to work in the private sector, preferably the aerospace industry. The goal of the program is to increase the number of minority students who graduate in the fields of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. A lot of students here and at different universities have their ultimate goal in mind, being a professor of chemical engineering. And go on to graduate studies. So after my master's degree, I want to go into a PhD degree to go to industry uh, for drug development. Why do we need to increase the number of diverse students graduating in STEM fields? Diverse perspectives are very important. Uh, it, it provides a variety. It provides alternatives. And, and that is what I believe our country is based upon. Over 600 campuses nationwide have teamed up with partners in industry, research laboratories, and local state and federal agencies to create what we call alliances. Through our partnership with the university's LSAMP program, we give university students a chance to see the wonder they can create in the next generation. There are over 40 alliances with more on the way, providing many activities and services to help you succeed on campus and beyond. As a Native American student, it's really helped me grow in my confidence as a scientist. There's help with your schoolwork and tutoring. So we offer a very high quality study group is what this is. They collaborate with their other classmates and that's a chance for them to really talk about maybe that they're having trouble understanding what's going on. I tutor on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and the different students come in with homework questions and exams. I help go over it and just encourage them with their work. They were able to help me out and here I am now, a few years later, giving back. There is support through peer mentoring and the chance to belong to communities who have common interests. The mentor's role is to guide you and also give you advice, but also to let you make your own decisions. You need a place where you can go to and have a shoulder to cry on if you need it, or someone to give you a high five when you've celebrated something amazing or achieved something fantastic, whether it's in your class or in your personal life. And ways for you to get professional experience and prepare you for the future. I got the opportunity to be here and I just completely fell in love with research. We've patented 
a process to make 3D printed electronics. You get to go to conferences and it's just so enlightening to see that people are doing stuff like that. This study is gauging the effectiveness of how USDA programs are educating local farmers. I got to make a poster and I, I won, which was shocking because there's a lot of good posters, so it was, it was an honor. Every year, more than 30,000 LSAMP students are graduating in STEM fields, and the numbers are growing. I'm graduating in May of this year with a Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering. I hope to work on light rail design and stormwater management. Many are working in world-leading organizations and laboratories. In particular, what I do on this team is that I'm implementing a non-spherical gravitational model. It requires a lot of research, a lot of effort. And others are giving back as teachers and mentors to new generations of LSAMP students. The thought of being able to come back to my alma mater encourage others to pursue a career in STEM uh, were instrumental in, in me deciding to be a faculty member. You too can become a STEM graduate offering leadership and contributing unique and creative ideas to science in the future. I want to build rockets. So basically in the, in the long term, my long term goal is help uh, hopefully NASA or, or commercial flight. There are hundreds of LSAMP programs available in many colleges and universities nationwide. I see LSAMP opening a lot of doors. What we really need is people in the sciences. That's the future. And I know that if I can do it, you guys can do it. For more information on how to become an LSAMP student, try your own college or university website, or visit the website shown here for a listing of LSAMP programs. And we need more and more young people to come on board and help play. We play with big toys all the time. Now, Nevada's goal uh, is to inspire minority students to pursue majors and careers in STEM and encourage them to seek out LSAMP and other programs that provide support and enrichment experiences to help facilitate student success. Thank you very kindly. You've been, you've been, you've been a good audience. Thank you. The, uh, the official LSAMP program um, focuses at uh, the, the baccalaureate level, although we do have um, a, uh, a bridge um, to, um, uh, into graduate school. So it's at the baccalaureate level that we provide the, uh, the fundamental federal support. We encourage all sites to have some kind of pre-college activities. And you saw, uh, I made reference to that. And, and those pre-college activities can, um, uh, we leave it to the discretion of, of the Alliance to decide just how deep or how low they're going to go uh, into, uh, uh, into pre-college schools, uh, into public schools, uh, uh, private schools, what, or just whatever. So, um, but we encourage, given that, uh, Money is are always one of the limiting, uh, often one of the limiting factors. So we realize that with the dollars that we have available, we can't do everything. So our niche, um, as officially assigned, is that uh, the uh, it, it begins at the college level, the undergraduate level. But we do encourage uh, uh, sites to leverage the dollars and, and and collect state funds or private funds to to reach down uh, into pre-college. Uh, uh, levels, if that's where uh, the particular needs are. Thank you for the question. Sir. How do uh, postgraduate students that have, haven't had any experience with the LSAM um, throughout, their, throughout their education want to go back and participate or get back to it? Who would they contact or how, how would they be able to? Become a faculty member and um, have a job. Uh, 
uh, uh, so that you can uh, uh, be a coordinator. Um, the, uh, that's, a, that's the formal way. But we do have a lot of volunteers, a lot of volunteers. And uh, that is a way to, uh, to deal with it. But again, because uh, although, yes, we have uh, $45.6 million per year is our budget for the LSAM program. But this is a national program, you, you understand. It's national. So really, uh, there are, uh, have been individuals who, in Congress who have said that the LSAM program is significantly underfunded given the big bang that it is, a, uh, that it is uh, that's occurring uh, from, from the program. But these are tough times uh, in recent years to be talking about budget increases. Uh, and although we, we do talk about that uh, and do encourage uh, the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the foundation to provide, uh, the con Congress to provide additional support so that we can do even more. Um, some have questioned, um, well, well, why are you just fo fo focusing on just the two years of graduate studies? Because that's not going to get you a PhD. No, it's not, but it, it, it is what it says. It's a bridge. It's a start. It's a, it's a, it's a, the, uh, we are focusing at the transition points. Uh, we have a, another bridge. Uh, it's called the Bridge to the Baccalaureate, B2B. We have that as also a track uh, in, the, in the LSAMP program. I didn't speak about that, but that is fact. And uh, that is an effort uh, to um, help sites to uh, participate uh, at that transition point from two year to four year. We already have over 200 uh, community colleges as a part of the LSAMP portfolio. And uh, there will be more, I assure you. Uh, so volunteer. Thank you. Uh, Hi. I, um, I work with the NERS College program here. Yes. Which pretty much mirrors some of the services that you were providing with your yes. program? Yes. Um, are there any eligibility requirements for the students in order to participate or become you know, involved in the program? The local site decides who their students will be. Okay. Yeah, all uh, the local sites make, make that determination. We don't have um, a, um, a set of requirements at, uh, at the national level, but we leave it to the local sites to, uh, to make that determination. It's, so it's a local call. Yes. Hi. Um, so given the disproportionate underrepresentation of women, and particularly women of color in STEM disciplines and careers, does LSAMP offer or plan to offer specific outreach or support for women of color that are interested in STEM? Well, our, our, our numbers, uh, if, if, if I had included updated numbers, you would have seen that uh, the majority of the students, um, uh, there are more uh, females getting uh, undergraduate degrees than males. Right. If, if, I, if, if I had updated those numbers. Are there specific programs that are targeting women of color within LSAM that are designed <coughs> to address the problems that women of color have as students in graduate programs, things like that? Uh, again, we leave it to the local site to decide um, where, what the focus, what, what the foresight will be. So we, the answer is that we don't fix it from our level at, in Washington as to uh, if there will be a gender focus or, or, or not. Uh, we leave it to the local sites to determine what are the issues locally. Can some of the local sites offer that type of assistance? They can. Do, do you know if any do? Uh, at this point, no. But the majority of the participants are women is the point I'm making. Now, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we've had some, some queries associated with uh, Af African American males uh, and Latino males. They are slowly falling off. Uh -huh. And so we've had some to say, okay, well then, we, we need to start thinking about uh, some special strategies to fix those. Um, but, I'm, but I'm satisfied that as we look at our numbers, uh, those individuals who are going on for the graduate degrees, if it, if, they, if it comes up short on, uh, on the gender side, one way or the other, then I'm sure that the site will, will be interested in, in tweaking that. But our numbers are pretty good right now. That is in the AMP program, but nationwide, that's not true. Right, that's yeah. Right. yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're open, so we're flexible, we're open, and we leave it to the sites, to the local sites to make that call. Yes. Yes, sir. Just curious, if our, our students here in Nevada, are they eligible for the, the DOE research or any portion of LSAM as of yet? No. 
No. Well, I'll leave that to the local site uh, to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's, that's uh, first of all, we have to have an application. See, we have a general rule of thumb that, oh, we just don't make awards to uh, locations that don't apply. <laughs> Is it, uh, okay? So uh, please understand that my presence here to, uh, today and in the past is an indication that we are very interested in the state of Nevada. And uh, given the, the wonderful dinner that we had uh, last night, uh, I'm, I'm encouraged uh, that um, uh, positive action will come forward. The next opportunity is in October. That, that'll be the deadline. That's the expected deadline. And, and I, I need to have you know that uh, we do have some handouts uh, from, from some of this that will be available as you exit the room today. Um, there, there are handouts in, in the back, and you may want to uh, avail yourselves of, of some of those handouts. Can you give a so Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.